So I thought I'd take the opportunity to share some of my build notes on Necreality Ender 2. Uh, the first thing I swapped out was the power supply. I'm borrowing this one from another project. But the power supply that came with it was this guy. And it only has active cooling. And the printer comes with this uh, oh, a power cover. But interestingly enough, if you'll notice, this power supply has no vent holes anywhere. So the only way this fan can draw air is through the back. Which means your cooling will be mitigated by the fact that you have the electronic shroud on. Anyways, I don't like the noise of that fan. I'm going to be doing a lot of other upgrades to this printer. I'm going to be installing the TMC21 30 stepper drivers. I'm going to be changing the controller board to an MKS 1.4. Um, this is my first delving into Marlin, uh, getting my hands in there, and there is a lot of stuff to configure. But anyways, back to the build notes before I start really ripping this thing apart. The LCD that came with it had a protective, uh, had the protective film on it, and I didn't notice that until after I removed the LCD. So you might see some bubbling on your LCD. That's probably just that protective filament that can be removed. All right, on to the notes. So on the, you know, I've already shared the problems I had with the Y axis. Um, the Z axis stepper, I installed it rotated 90 degrees so that the cable uh, connection is to the side rather than out the back. That just seemed like the right thing to do and it improved cable management. Um, the Z-axis bracket down here, I printed my own um, because at first, you know, I noticed the top of the uh, Z-axis rod was wobble. Well, it wasn't wobbling, but it was displacing as the, the uh, Z-axis moved down. So, it was about a two millimeter displacement at the top. At first I thought it was a spacing problem, but I later found that there's really only about a half millimeter of extra space needed. The real problem was, was that it's off center. The Z axis assembly up here um, is a little bit off center. So I designed a new bracket and I'm pretty sure you can't see in there but there's actually a slot there instead of a hole. And then I have these little grub screws in here to help lock that in position. I will share that on Thingiverse. Another first upgrade I did was the filament guide. I don't want my filament rubbing on the screw. And also it, uh, the one I found uh, grabs onto the um, extruder heater cable and fan cables. Also, I upgraded the fan shroud. This is kind of the standard uh, way to go with the Ender 2. I can't say I've noticed that big of a change in print quality, um, but then again, I didn't do much printing without it. Uh, what else? I noticed that the wheels, the, the V-Groove wheels, were actually already starting to show a little wear, and if I ran my finger down the track, I'd get some black residue. So I have some of this uh, silicone oil. This stuff is pretty expensive, but I figured it'd last me a long time, so I invested in it. Um, my only advice on, on this is do get some silicone oil. It's really, really useful. Um, and, you know, uh, get food safe grade because you're gonna get it on your hands every time you touch the printer. Um, it's just, might as well be food safe. Um, anyways, I put a little bit of the silicone oil on all of the tracks so that the rubber V-groove wheels will be slightly lubricated so they won't wear down so quickly. Um, the print bed. This surface, whatever it is, it just grabs on plastic like crazy. Uh, and I have found that using the glue stick is beneficial as a release agent. And when my parts get really stuck, I very carefully dribble water around the perimeter and just let them soak and let that glue soften back up. Um, what else? The 
Uh, I prepared the aluminum surface before putting down the the bed because you peel off you know some 3M adhesive backing and you stick it down. Um, I prepared that surface by cleaning it with the cleaning the aluminum with rubbing alcohol, letting that dry, and then I used acetone. So rubbing alcohol is a pretty good degreaser, but it does leave a thin film, and the acetone strips that off too. Um, so this stuff is really really stuck. Uh, even though the parts have been really hard to remove, I've seen no signs of bed lifting at all. Um, leveling using the three-point system is a little crazy, and I want to do some more evaluation or investigation into this, because if this corner is low, for example, it's obvious you'll want to raise this pin, right? But that's not the only way to raise or yeah, to modify this corner. Um, there's actually here, here, and here are the actual locations of the adjustment screws. So if this guy is off, well, let's go with this guy because there's a screw underneath it, right? If he's low, it makes sense to raise this corner, but you can also raise this point by lowering either of these. So I had to go around the bed probably five or eight times until I was happy with my first level. Um, but otherwise, this printer is printed pretty good. Uh, one of the another uh, subtle thing I adjusted along as I was building the printer was this is a uh, kind of a grooved bearing. So I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get this reasonably in frame here. Um, but there's a groove there that the filament flows through. And there was a washer underneath that bearing, and I found that the washer, so if this is, you know, the filament groove, right, the washer caused the filament to be running very off-center. So I was able to take that washer out, and I put it on top um, because I needed the spacing for the length of the screw that's going through there. Uh, and that gave a good filament track alignment for me. Um, I suspect when they designed the printer, they simply failed to account for a washer in there. Uh, other major considerations, I think that was the most of it. Um, well, one more thing I did that isn't necessarily obvious. Um, all of these bars, like right here, the, the belt runs, the Y-axis belt runs through this double beam. And that double beam was full of aluminum shavings uh, from fabrication. So I just used some pipe cleaners to help push all that aluminum gunk out of all of the all of the pieces. Because I don't want this belt picking up that aluminum and wearing itself down. Um, obviously, the assembly instructions were sparse. Uh, the printer did come with a sort of a poster which with a bunch of reference images that was helpful um, I watched the official assembly video in like 2x speed um, before I got started and then I watched uh, I'm saying this right uh, Neri's um, assembly video as well and those two video sources plus the poster uh, pretty much did the trick for me um, Another thing I decided to do was I flipped the um, this knurled screw around so that it's uh, there's more of the shaft available. Um, I plan to print a knob up here, uh, kind of like Maker's Muse did, um, to make filament feeding easier. And that's the majority of my build notes. I will try to link in all of the Thingiverse files, and I will also upload my bracket. Um, and when I get this thing running, if I get this thing running with the TMC 2130s, I will share an update of that as well. Catch you next time.